What's going on, everybody? Terrell Friday here with Future DDS for another installment of the DSE series. Today, we have Rami Hirtani uh, from University of Minnesota School of Dentistry joining us. How you doing, Rami? I'm doing excellent. Thanks so much for having me, man. Of course, man. Thank you for taking some time out. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little interesting out, out there in the world right now, but, you know, definitely thanks for, uh, for sitting down and speaking with us. I'm hoping everyone is safe, you know, and just, um, you know, whatever information I would love to share with you guys today, I hope you find it useful. And if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to help you and answer all these questions, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Okay. So first, man, I'll just allow you to reintroduce yourself, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your journey into, uh, you know, dental school, where you went to undergrad and kind of your journey into dentistry. Absolutely. So as the name suggests, Rami Hiritani, I'm Middle Eastern. I was born in Syria in 1992. So that makes me almost 28. My birthday is coming up in April. Uh, I was born in Syria in 1992. Um, I moved to Saudi Arabia with my family when I was four years old. So I think it was 1996. And I've pretty much been living in Saudi Arabia since then. Um, I went to you know, primary school, um, elementary, mm -hmm. high school. We don't have college back then. So I was able to transition you know, from high school to down school directly. Right. Um, and I just started my journey back in 2011 as a first year down student in Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. Okay. So you, you started in Saudi Arabia. Did you f actually finish your, I guess, your dental degree Correct. there? And then, so okay. I, was, I was planning since then, um, you know, to pursue a higher education, you know, have a better career. Um, so I started doing, so it's, it's basically a six year down school plus the internship, which is mandatory. So okay. that makes it seven. So I started down school back in 2011, graduated in 2017, and I finished my, um, you know, internship in 2018. So that's about seven years of down school. Okay. But I've been applying. Um, I've been actually planning to make it to down school since 2016. So, you know, just like any internationally trained dentist, we have to go through the national boards, part one, part two, the year mm -hmm. total. You have to have a good resume to apply for schools. And then I just made it in 2019. I had the interview and I got accepted in UFM. Yep. Nice, nice. Congrats, man. <laughs> for sure. Okay, so I guess you don't really have the the whole the traditional DAT pre-dental experience, man. But I guess if you if you know any tips or maybe you've heard some things or if you could shine a little bit more light about the, you know, some of the things that you had to go through uh, through the application process and kind of kind of getting everything together. Sure. Um, from what I've seen here, people usually have really good, you know, solid background to transition to dental school. So I'm pretty sure every single pre dental student is sufficiently ready to apply for school. As far as I would recommend for those DAT programs, um, use your common knowledge. I mean, study with your partners. Uh, use very good websites like Crack DAT. Those websites really prepare you well for, um, for your applications in dental school. All right. Now I know there's an average for every score or every single section of the DAT. Most schools would average about 21, 22, maybe 23 on the DAT scores. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, just prepare for it well. Never know. Got you, got you. Okay, so uh, for your school in particular, for University of Minnesota, do you guys have any type of, uh, like, I guess, feeder programs or enrichment programs, uh, you know, impressions days, anything like that to, uh, you know, for any prospective students to kind of get more experience and, and get a better feel for your school? Right, so I started school in January, 2020. So okay. it's basically my first semester. But as far as I've heard, um, you know, people are very helpful at the University of Minnesota. So, okay. you know, if any student or any pre down student, as a matter of fact, wants to apply or at least study, start studying for it, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of good programs at the UFM provided for students to excel in this field, for sure. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so just tap in and do it. Like I said, you know, I haven't encountered myself a program because I'm an internationally trained dentist. Right, right. But we walked through the same pathway, man. It's a DDS in the end. Yep. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's just, a, it's a little bit, uh, different or, you know, you got to go through your, your end, whereas, you know, everybody here, uh, or going through an undergrad route, they have to have to go through a few different groups, but same, same journey. Like you said, man, <laughs> it, it was a long ride. I got to tell oh, you. Oh, oh yeah. I can, <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So yeah I've, been I was, applying, yeah, I've been applying since 2016. You can only imagine. Um, so you actually, long. How, how, many, how, how many times did you apply? And then I guess how many schools did you actually end up applying to when you were doing it? Okay, so I was preparing my first application in 2016. Um, it's a portal called CAPID. Okay. Just like, you know, pre-down students have the ad test uh, mm -hmm. portal for them. 
we have CAPID um, for internationally trained dentists. So I've been preparing my first application in 2016, um, applied first time in 2017, uh, actually got one interview only because I was still not officially graduated since then. <laughs> um, didn't make it, you know, things happen. Um, everything happens in life for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Reapplied again in 2018, got two interviews from two different dental schools, mainly in California. I'm not going to say names, but All right. <laughs> this is a yep. And then still didn't make it. I was really frustrated. I was, you know, thinking about not pursuing this field anymore because, you know, failure after failure, it's, it's a lot to handle, really. It's, right. a, it's a hell of a burden. But I just, I just believed in myself and God and with family support and friends, I just made it 2019. Nice, nice. Well, we're here now. Like you said, it was a, a long journey, but we've made it. So when you, uh, you know, you, you finished up your applications and everything, you got these interviews. Um, how was the actual interview when you got to, you know, University of Minnesota? How was your impression of the school and your impression of how the interview process was? Okay, so um, the UFM, University of Minnesota, is located in Malcolm Moose Tower, which is on the East Bank Station okay. in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, so for us, the process was basically to get an online assessment. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one assessment, just like we're doing right now. So a bunch of questions being prepared and, you know, you get to answer all these questions based on your opinion and judgment. And most of them were basically, um, as you would say, based on clinical and um, academic situations, like what would you do with this patient, what would you do with that? How would you work? How do you see yourself as a teammate? You know, are you good with working with others and so on and so forth? Um, once you actually pass this online interview, you get an in-person in interview, basically. They send, you, they send you an email and then you basically travel from whatever state or country, as a matter of fact, to Minnesota. And then you sit down. So this year we had probably about six batches. Each batch contains of 15 people, okay. give or take 15 or 14. And then they ask us also, they, we, we kind of sit down in, in three individual groups, so five in each table, and we talk to professors. You know, once again, they ask us about your journey. Um, how do you see yourself in school? What are you going to do in five years from now? All these pre-dental questions that being asked to pre-dental students nowadays are kind of formulated in a different way to us. Right. But we have the same concept, basically. Like, what do you see yourself and what are you going to do? This and that. Um, but there is one more thing, which is the practical session. Mm -hmm. So it is located on the fourth floor. So they just basically took us down uh, to the pre-sim lab and we have to perform, you know, a bunch of procedures on acrylic teeth ranging all the way from class one to PFMs to full gold crowns. And then based on that, based on your, your performance in the interview and your hand skills, you get accepted. Okay. So it's a little bit more intensive for, for ISD. It, it is definitely more intensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little bit, but like I said, same degree, man. Yep. Yeah, definitely, definitely, without a doubt. So I guess, um, you know, you, you kind of don't have the traditional first year experience, but how has your, uh, I guess, how has the, the curriculum been for you since once you got to, you know, U of M? How has how the curriculum been? How have you kind of been introduced into, I guess, the dental curriculum as well as the, the clinic and everything? Absolutely. So for us, um, we're actually called past students. Um, so the past students, in the, in the meantime, or, or probably generally speaking, we do attend lectures with our colleagues from D2, okay. from the second year dental students. In some labs in particular, we actually go to private clinics and we practice. Um, you know, they expect us to have some certain of sufficient knowledge for dental school to be able to excel. Right. I mean, I get it. We haven't gone through the first year just like most students do. Um, but yeah, I mean, you get accepted based on your, your knowledge. I mean, they expect something from you. Those you know, professors and the admissions committee expect something from you, basically. So um, lectures, theory part, mainly 90%, we actually attend lectures with the, same, with the same group. But when it comes to practical, operative mainly, probably some prosto crowns and bridges and whatsoever, we actually practice our, on our own, you know, okay. as a small group, the past students. Got you, got you. Okay. And you guys start clinic, um, you know, seeing patients at the end of your, I guess, your first year or sec after D2 year? So we start clinics as UFM students um, at the end of the second year. Okay. 
So it was supposed to be at the end of spring semester, basically, which right. is about May, June-ish. But then there's a delay because of the coronavirus. Um, and the admission, you know, and the, the school's officials have actually released a statement saying that, you know, we're basically going to move everything to online. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to leave the practical session for later on for students to catch up with it once right. we get the chance to go back to Moose Tower and perform our procedures. Yep. All right. Same, same on this side. We're just... You know everything online right now and then eventually i'm sure they'll they'll figure out something with the schedule to get all the practical stuff in for sure safety first absolutely yeah. of course of course so last couple of questions here as we start to wrap up man what's something that you feel like is unique about your school experience you know granted you only have your your u of m experience but what do you what do you feel like is unique about your experience there um they definitely pay attention to you i mean you know the school professors are absolutely fantastic they're phenomenal yeah. Um, whenever you have any problems, they actually either come by, by themselves to help you out or they assign students, senior students, for you to help you. Uh, that's as far as I've, you know, experienced on the pre-clinical side. The theory, we're just like family, you know. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you suffer with, you know, people are here to help you out. Um, special courses, people, have, you know, actually senior students do actually give out lectures and they tutor you basically, you know, if, if you're weak on certain subjects. They do help you out. So it feels like it feels like a whole family, you know. Nice. <laughs> down school is down school and we just basically thrive through it with, you know, as a team. That's what we do. Yeah. Exactly it. So all right, last question as we start to wrap up here, man, is uh is gonna be if you can go back now and tell, you know, that that younger version of you that was applying to dental school, you know, got rejected first time and everything. Um, if you could go back and tell your, that version of yourself any advice, what would that advice be? Never give up. Never give up, man. First and foremost, never give up. Because, you know, just like we actually see in movies and see in TV shows, um, success doesn't come from the first try at all. You know, that's only on, that's only Hollywood. You know, it doesn't happen like this. In real life <laughs> world, it takes you one attempt, two, maybe three. I know people who made it to down school after four attempts. So yeah. each attempt is once a year. So it took them four years, but they made it. And here's my piece of advice for anyone. Um, don't give up. Even if you feel a course, even if, you, if you're withdrawn from, from a certain subject because you feel like you're weak, you can't do it, you will do it, trust me. It's only a matter of time. And if, I always, you know, I always tell this to myself, it's a bump on the road, that's all, you know? That's it. <laughs> that's it, man. You're not, you're not even gonna remember that bump once you get to the, to the finish line, so. Oh, no, no, trust me. When you become a dentist, it'll be worth it, for all sure. Worth it. For sure, for sure, man. I couldn't say it any better myself, but again, Rami, I just want to say thank you uh, for, for taking some time out, man, and speaking to us and, and giving us some good knowledge, some gems, man. You know, actually, um, before we actually uh, wrap up, yeah, I just want to say, uh, I just want to give a shout out to Stephanie Perko. Um, she was actually featured on the Future DDS channel. Nice. <laughs> he was actually, yep. So I actually was watching those videos before applying to the UFM. Man. And I saw her video and I'm like, I have to get in touch with her. So I went to her Instagram account, got in touch with her, got a lot of good, for, good and useful information about the school. And she was actually a major um, key in my success to apply for the UFM. So once again, thank you, know, thank you Stephanie. Thank you. Stephanie. And thank Dr. T. Brown. You know, you guys are doing a fantastic job here, man. Man, thank you again, man. Appreciate that. That means a lot, truly, man. Stephanie. Uh, thank you. But this is a testament to exactly, you know, why we're, at, why we're doing it, you know. You guys are doing the right thing, man. It's a success. It's all about success. Thank you so much. Man, no problem, man, for sure. If, I guess if, you know, this is a perfect segue to if anybody has any questions for you or wants to reach out to you about uh, U of M, uh, man, what's the, I guess, what's your Instagram so they can get in touch with you and send you a DM? Sure. Um, I will actually provide my Instagram. It's BDS, so the abbreviation for Bachelor of Dental Surgery. So BDS2, the letter 2, DDS. Okay. And, you know, I'll be more than, you know, happy and uh, to receive any kind of questions people generally have about applications, you know. For sure. For Just sure. like you guys give us the, the, the knowledge. It's, it's my duty to pass it on, you know. Man, that's it. That's it, man. We just got to help, help the next one come up and, and, we'll be, and we'll be all right. For real. Truly. For sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for yeah. the team. But we'll make sure we put that down in the description box so, you know, anybody can reach out to you. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for us, man. Again, on behalf of Future DDS family, all the viewers out there, thank you. Um, for all the viewers out there, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and hit the like button as well. Um, you know, so you, you know whenever we post up new content. 
And if you have any questions for myself or Tyler, go over to Instagram, follow us at underscore future DDS and uh, send us a DM there. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, that's going to wrap it up, man. Thanks again, Rami. Thank you.